Okay. Hey guys, thank you for tuning in. Uh, I have two very special guests, which I'm going to introduce you to in a moment. Um, I've been really excited to speak to these guys. They have helped me massively in my journey and uh, they were a huge reason why I was able to leave my own job and start my own business. So I'm gonna introduce you to two very special people. Now they started their business in March 2018. They had 14 years of branding and marketing experience under their belt. And they set out to build brands for business owners um, to help them find their voice, help them find a following, find a following and an audience of people. And within 90 days, they made 100,000, six figures in their first 90 days of starting their new business. And this was helping companies implement the strategies from their P3 brand immersion program. And since then, they've gone on to do the same for globally renowned business coaches and experts, Olympic athletes, uh, and property entrepreneurs as well. And uh, everything they are doing is to help them achieve their mission in life of empowering over 7 million entrepreneurs by 2040 to become the next generation of thought leaders. So I'm hugely excited to announce and welcome Jay and Naomi. How are you doing, guys? Hey! Hey, Tom. Thanks for having us. I'm really excited to speak to you today. Yes, awesome. can't wait. I'm excited. So excited. So the first, you know, I read, reading that, that, that is amazing. And that last bit there, you know, uh, empowering over 7 million entrepreneurs by 2040. So tell me, what does a world look like where you have empowered over 7 million thought leaders? Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the way it came is that obviously everyone wants to impact the world. Well, it's an assumption that is, I guess, because of not everyone might want to do that, but we certainly want to impact the world in a positive way. And we know that many people in our circle of friends and our circle of, well, our network, I guess you call it now, which grows every day, a lot of people want to positively impact people. And, you know, we, we're optimistic, but equally quite real about what's achievable and impacting what's nearly 8 billion people, I think it is in the world now. It's a very difficult feat to achieve so we worked on the basis of if we can help or positively influence seven million people which we believe is very much doable then and we help people that want to help other people then we're setting ourselves on a path to actually help the world because if we help seven million people each of those people help just 10 people each and then each of those people help just 10 people each and then that continues you know very quickly you're at seven billion people which at the time we actually set uh, that was our mission. That was pretty much the uh, the no number of people in the world. Yeah. So it's about having that global impact, but working with others in order to, to do it, because we know that we can't do it ourselves. Yeah, yeah definitely. So, so you're using that art of uh, the art of leverage, really. Yeah, yeah exactly that. One hundred percent. I think it's important to allow people to to share their skills with the world you know everybody has a unique purpose and a reason why they're here on this planet and for them to never get to that point where they can actually flourish and shine and show those skills off would be a terrible shame so we, that's why we want to do what we're what we're trying to do mm. awesome thank you so there'll be a lot of people watching this that you know they they are they there's something that they're passionate about there's something that they want to do in life and they want to create profit from um, however, you know, they're, they're in a job, maybe they're in a nine to five, you know, you guys have made that switch. So what was the reason for that? And, and what advice would you give those people who are thinking about making that change? Well, you think, made the jump first. So, yeah, yeah, I think it sort of came to us, um, when we first got together, we always had this passion to, to do something entrepreneurial at the time we didn't really know what that meant we just we thought it meant a side hustle where we could make a few extra pounds you know on the side um but we had a huge chat about this and it, we realized that we wanted to do something a lot more but at the time we were, we were in a corporate job we both used to work together as well so you know it's a blessing that we get on well so you know <laughs> otherwise we'd have killed each other by now um, but it, it you know it it came to us that we really wanted to do this and the only way to do this was to to make to make that leap and for quite a number of years we were getting pressured by other friends that had already been successful to to make the leap they were honestly it's the best thing you're ever going to do just do it just do it 
we were like, yeah, but the fear, the fear. Um, <laughs> what and was the fear? What was the, what was a specific fear? Well, it's the unknown, isn't it? The fear of the unknown is the fear of physically putting your naked leg out of the bed covers for the monsters to grab it. That's literally what it felt like. And, you know, it was scary because <laughs> how we don't know anything about building a business or running a business. So how, how are we supposed to do that? And, um, you know, thankfully, through a lot of encouragement, we eventually took that leap. Um, and I, I left first. Um, and it was it was so so scary, but I just immersed myself in loads of training. Um, you know, I never left. I literally never left my laptop on my box. I was like this constantly for months on end, to the point that I was physically able to support Jane what it was we needed to do. Um, we had this huge plan, and then it sort of just happened naturally. Jay was like, "Yep, yeah, that's it." You know, yeah, it was it was an odd situation odd. <laughs> for for me, I guess the the idea was with things that were going on in our corporate positions. We, we knew that eventually we wanted to do something, mm. but it was I think we had the mindset, of, and maybe this was led by fear, but subconsciously we didn't realise this is what it was. But we were under the, I guess, under the goal of let's work and succeed in this role. And we were doing great things for this business. You know, we took it from, it was losing money to making, you know, 3.5 million per year in less than four years. And, you know, the business was starting to do well, but we were under the, we were working towards a goal of let's get this to be successful. Let's put some money aside. And then when we have more experience, then we can maybe look at doing something on our own and, and move to Australia, which was something we wanted to do and continues to be something that we are now going to do. And Naomi's hand was sort of forced towards the end of, was it 2017? Yeah, yeah. It, 2000... made, it made the decision a lot easier, let's put it that way. <laughs> yes. So 2017, end of, to, towards the start of 2018, Naomi decided to leave and she started working on, on her, her own thing. And I didn't have, I worked late, I was there early, so I didn't really have time to help or support her. But what I did do is I put her in contact with people that I knew, people that I'd worked with in the past, um, because I'd been in marketing for you know quite a, a number of years. And then I pointed in the direction of gurus to read upon, courses to look at, and Naomi just, just buried herself in, in knowledge and just... Every time I'd come back, I'd be so busy still. I didn't really have time to listen, but she'd be going, I've done this, I've learned this, this is amazing, look at this. <laughs> and I'd try, you know, I was interested because I want to support her, but I was still corporate mindset, I was still in my corporate role. And then later on in that year, so around March time, my hand was forced as well. And I had to make the decision to leave. And initially I was like, right, I'll get another job. So I started yeah. interviewing for, I was, I was a group yeah, marketing director sure. at the time. So I'd worked my way up to as high as I could go in the company really. And I thought, you know, I'll get another job doing that. So I was interviewing with software companies and other companies local to myself. And I was going for the interviews and things were going really well. And then it, it just came to me that maybe maybe this is the time to yeah. to make that leap. You know, I've I've managed to live on the money I have got saved for the past month, month and a half. Why don't I use that time now to actually, I know I can start making money like that. I, I know how to make money. I know how to... I know how to generate leads. It's what I've done for the past 10 years, 11 years. So I knew I could do it, but it was just about having that kick up the arse to actually stop and go, do you know what? Stop working for someone else now because what happened before could just happen again in a new job. Mm. And I thought, that's it. I don't really want to work for anyone ever again. So then because of that, I started work well. I jumped in with Naomi on the business that she'd set up. And um, after a little while, she added me as a director. I think it was just an ego thing to make me feel good about myself. Uh, so we dropped He's myself. In, <laughs> so we dro <laughs> dropped myself in as co-founder as well. And then from that point, we've just driven the business forward, and it was two minds coming together. Naomi's wealth of knowledge that she's learned from well, God knows how many different books, so products, many, courses so all over the place, and we combine that together with my experience because. I'd worked growing businesses before, but my knowledge of growing and running a business was theoretical. Yeah. So it was strange, concerning, and exciting at the same time to put that into practice and actually say, do you know what? We actually need to understand cash flow now. It's not just something I say and go, you must know your cash flow. Otherwise, you know, you could fail and you wouldn't even realize you're failing. This time it was like, I can't just say it. I need to actually do it and know what to do. Mm. And working together, that was great for us both because we really, 
where my shortfalls were or my shortcomings, Naomi stepped in and where hers were, I would step in. Yeah. And it works really well. And when we come up against a challenge, we work on it together while we fight <laughs> until <laughs> someone gives in. Then we blame that person. <laughs> that's, part of, that's part of partnerships, right? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Right. So this is this is what I wanted to ask then. So your first ninety days in business, yeah. uh, I think it's something ridiculous. Something like between sixty and eighty percent of of new businesses they're out of business by by year end. Yeah. What is the difference that you guys had that meant you could go on and create in those first three months? You could go on and create a hundred thousand in revenue. I, I think it was yeah. I think it was people that we surround ourselves with you know the motivation that we had around us and we had mentors from America you know we, we were paying mentors um, that were very very successful people that have run ads for Tony Robbins you know th these types of people that we were surrounding ourselves with uh, Billie Jean Russell Brunson and um, we just fully immersed ourselves and we literally spammed every single Facebook group possible with loads of questions um, and we just kept ourselves in that peak state and the mindset to just keep going, keep going, keep going. There were tears, there were fights, mm. but that happens. And when we come out the other end, we were just like, oh my God, we, we did it. You know, we actually did it. We didn't, we set a goal out to just do well, <laughs> but we never actually expected that result so quickly if anything mm. um and i think it is a true testament to who we surrounded ourselves with massively what about you? yeah i think one thing to i like to be clear with this when we talk about this because it was one hundred and three thousand that we that we made in the first 90 days but it was contract revenue yeah. so that wasn't one hundred and three thousand pound in the bank it was based on contracts that we'd secured yeah and then what that would pay us over the term of the contract mm. um so you know i like to be clear and like completely open with that it wasn't cash in the bank but, but yeah i wish it was <laughs> but, but a lot of people who would be desperate for having three uh having a hundred thousand in contract revenue yeah yeah so it, it was good and i think the biggest thing it did for us is a confidence boost that mm. we we thought we thought that we knew that we could do it but now we knew that we could do it and that yeah. was great i think one of the biggest things for me in addition to what naomi said i mean that is very important surround yourselves with coaches surround yourself with with the knowledge of others and a positive environment and a positive crowd but a big thing for me was consistency mm -hmm. because we were able to put our time into being present on LinkedIn uh, to be present on, on Facebook to actually engage with people in a group and actually care about what they were doing what they were talking about not just jumping in there and saying here buy this from us because at the time we didn't have anything to sell we, no. we just had this idea that we could maybe do something to do with marketing to help these people establish a better brand and then help them to take that to market, reach the ideal client who's willing to pay them a premium price for a premium product. And that's important as well. Your product has to be premium if you want to charge a premium price. You know, yeah. at the end of the day, we're branding and marketing consultants, not magicians. So you have to have a good product or service in order for people to pay that. But because we went and took that direction, took that approach, what was really good for us is that we actually genuinely wanted to understand what is it that you need, what are the difficulties you're facing, and what you know what, what are the problems now, and what does what does success look like to you? Why haven't you got? Why aren't you there already? And what have you already tried? And people were just basically giving us the answers, and we were putting that into a package and going, well, here's our product. <laughs> and, you know, if, if anything, that's a great way to launch a new product. If anyone's looking for one, there's a tip for you there. Ask your target audience, based on what they say, yeah. put, it in, put it into yeah. a product, fill in the gaps, and then present it back to them. Because they've told you what they want. So mm -hmm. <laughs> as long as it was a genuine source of information, you now have a product to sell back and a client ready to buy it. Yeah. So yeah, for me, consistency in the short answer is consistency was a big, big key to that for us. Yeah, awesome. Thank you guys. So you can you can either this next question you can either answer, answer it um, together or on uh, individually. But do you guys have a favourite failure? <laughs> oh, that's a really good question. That is a good question. I'm going to let you go first. So I've got more favorite time to think. Favourite failure. <laughs> favorite failure. Um, oh, doesn't just have to be in in the business. It can be in the whole context of your life. That's such a good question. 
I think my ironic favourite failure was that we were we're marketing people and we made the mistake of not taking a sip of our own medicine at the beginning when we first started. Um, and it was highly, highly, highly ironic because we were going down this path of telling our, our clients what they needed to do. We know what they need to do. And then we, we ended up scratching our heads at one point thinking, why isn't this working for us? And we looked back and thought, oh my God, we've not, we've not done what we tell our clients to do. <laughs> it was just like, what, how, how has this, how has this happened? Um, but thankfully we caught ourselves pretty quickly and we, we did the work, <laughs> which helped funnily enough. Um, and um, we were able to continue forward. But yeah, I think that's my favorite really. It's, it's, it's very, very ironic. Um, and I think that will always stay with me. And we always talk about it now. Even now, we get caught up in the moment and we're excited and we're like, we just wanna just wanna launch or wanna just do this and wanna do that. And it's like, we have to go back to basics, do what we tell our clients to do. We always say it now, don't we? Mm. Gotta go back to basics first to do what we need to do. And it saved our skin so many times. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree with that. Um, I think for me, the biggest failure initially was that we were trying to get outside of buying books. We were trying to find all the information that we needed or thought we needed for free mm. because we thought, you know, we know, and it's, I think it's pretty much a fact that every bit of information that you need in order to do whatever you're trying to do is online. It's on the internet. And if you search hard enough using the right phrases and scroll through enough pages on, on Google, you're going to find the answer. Now the pro the benefit of that is that you don't pay. Now, I think that's probably the only benefit. The, the downfall to that, which is what we learned the hard way, is that in, in finding information for free online, first of all, that information isn't in any way tailored towards your specific situation. It's generic in order to suit as many people as possible to attract a wider audience. Secondly, not only is it not relevant to your specific situation, it's it's not packaged with all the other relevant bits of information. So you might learn something to do with sales from Grant Cardone, and then you might learn something else from Ty Lopez, and then you might learn something from Gary V. Now Gary V might say only send relevant emails twice a week, and Grant Cardone says ten x everything, baby, ten emails a day. If they unsubscribe, then they're never going to buy from you anyway. <laughs> and they're both kind of right, but if you do both, how? Well, you, you can't do both. <laughs> There's no way to do both. So what you end up doing is getting conflicting information, which might be right. Well, they're probably all right, but to their specific situations. And what we've realized is that even if you take the strategies of the experts and the gurus online, a lot of what they teach and what they sell isn't relevant to, I'm going to say your, but I don't mean you, Tom, but isn't relevant to your business. Because mm -hmm. as someone that's just starting off or someone that is in the first couple of years, you know, Gary Vee posts something out on Twitter about what is, whatever is eaten, and that gets millions of likes. If, if I did that, I'll get a comment from my mum saying, your dinner looks nice, Jay. And it's like, really? What you, and it, and it's, it's the truth. That, that's as far as it goes, because we're different people, different businesses, different audiences, and at different stages in, in our life. So the thinking that I can just get all that information for free, finding that conflict in information was a big, a big lesson that, we're getting it for free, but what we're actually doing is we're, for free, they're helping me take longer to go around in a circle to realize that actually I'm too business, too close to my own business to coach myself, and I actually need to pay for a coach, mm. or I need to pay for an actual program that's been designed for someone in my situation that wants to achieve the goals that I've set out for myself. So that, for me, is the biggest lesson in learning, and it's now something that I probably say an annoying amount that you're too close to your own business to coach yourself. And, you know, you've got to, especially as a coach, if you haven't got a, co a coach and you're a coach, then there is, you have no justification for anyone to ever pay you for coaching. You have to have a coach if you're a coach. Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree with that. Because if you're, if you're coaching people, you're going to be coaching people and their fears and their little voices. So you need somebody behind you helping you with your little voices and your fears. Um, that, that's a really great point. So thank you for that. So if somebody's... If somebody's going through a particularly challenging time, and if you 
If you're watching this now or you're, or you're watching this video in the future, we're, right now we're going through um, the coronavirus pandemic. Um, it's really taking its toll globally. So a lot of people are faced with a challenge that nobody was expecting, nobody, nobody was ready for. So what would you, and this can be related to any challenge, but what would you, you've said, surround yourself with, with like-minded people, people who are gonna uplift you. But what do, when people are going through that, what do they need to do? I have an answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go So what I would say is that generally when people are faced with something that's unexpected, what they tend to do is drop their goals, move them aside, and then go to the panic result. Yeah. So this is the thing I need to make sure happens, otherwise I'm gonna lose my business. And that's what people go to. So right now, the thing is with money. I need to make some sales because all my clients are gonna stop paying me. And I'm gonna to have to find new clients now that are willing to pay me. And maybe that's a bit of a mindset thing that you know what you focus on expands. So you focus on losing your clients, that's ultimately what's gonna happen. But there's something else you can do because, yes, I agree, you're going to have to turn your attention to actually trying to generate some new business in this time and also securing the clients that you do have in some way. But what people shouldn't do is what I see a lot of people doing is they the goals that they've shoved to the side, those goals, if set correctly, and I'm not going to go into how to set goals correctly, but if they, have been, if they have been set correctly, then they should be moving you closer to your mission, to, to the reason that you exist. And by sliding them aside, that means that you're not moving towards your mission anymore. So you're in survival mode. And that's what really you should try and avoid. Yes, you want to survive, but you don't want to be in survival mode because that is erratic behavior, rash decisions, lack of consistency, um, maybe a bit of blindness to the direction that you're going in. And what I found works for me in particular and some of my clients that I work with is that if you can keep those goals in mind and just work out the one single action that you can take every day that takes 10 minutes to half an hour, doesn't take much energy, doesn't take much attention, doesn't take much time. And if you can do that repeatedly day after day, just that one small action, the compound effect of that small action is, is going gonna, is gonna to be great. It will snowball and you'll still be moving towards your, your mission and towards your goal. But you're still going to have that additional time for that that little bit of panic that we're all humans that's still going to sit inside you like ah oh, my business can't fall apart. So you know you're going to be pushing towards that, but you're still you're still on path. You're still moving that direction with a bit of flailing over here to to keep your business in line. Now the worst thing you can do is lose that direction and just flail to keep your business in line because that's when mistakes are made, and it's very easy to sit in that state and not come out of it because when do you stop doing that? Yeah. When, when's the end so that that would be my suggestion to make sure you stay remain goal focused but just set in that that action that you can repeat daily that's simple low time low energy and low effort and if you can do that I, I see no reason that you won't continue to see success in your business no matter the industry that you're in and no matter at what level you're operating at yeah definitely did you want to add anything to that Naomi yeah I was going to say um amazing point and it is so true you've got it you've got to keep going and everything that you're doing don't let that stop because momentum is huge as soon as you you know pendulum swing as soon as it stops you've got to push it again to keep it going but also another thing that a lot of people are doing right now is they've just stopped spending yeah they've just gone oh you know this, this virus is taking over everything i need to just stop all my outgoings and then just just sit here in my little bubble and hog all my money and keep it to myself because that's you know that's what panic does it you know the, the government are telling everyone that they're going to be giving people salary like replacements and it's like everyone's sitting at home going oh, great what do i do now and the companies that can still continue you know we're seeing a lot of drop off but now more than ever is the best time to spend, it really is. I got an email the other day, which I thought was really, really clever. And it said the whole world is on sale. And it's, it's never been more true. Like now is the time for you as a business to, to rise up, stand out above everybody else, continue doing what you're doing, but 10 times more. Because right now, if you, you, know, if you just sort of go to the bottom of the pile and don't really do much, then that's where you're gonna stay. Whereas the ones that are successful at the end of this are the ones that have continued 
to to spend and I don't mean go out and just buy extra stuff I mean continue to stay with what it is you're doing continue advertising because it is so cheap right now continue spending money on your coaches and your training continue doing everything that you are currently doing I appreciate that there might be businesses that physically can't afford to do that that's fine but don't just stop your outgoings because you're scared you might not get money because that that mindset will mean that you won't get money Mm. so you you've just got to keep going in these times and you know we don't know what's going to happen we could wake up tomorrow and everyone everybody's left us <laughs> you know it, it could happen but you know we're still continuing in exactly the same way that we we were before this outbreak happened and it's so 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 important to do that and another point as well to add on to that is just to make sure that you do whatever you can do right now online literally turn everything online as quickly as possible i know that tom you were speaking the other day about virtual summits and i know that you love this topic yeah. Thank you, um, <laughs> <laughs> but it is it is so true there are ways to do everything our entire business is online everything we do is digital um we we we're, we're actually talking now on how we can make it person to person <laughs> not the other way around and I think that's kind of where everyone needs to be going. If you've got a business right now that's a bricks and mortars business um, and you then turn something into what it is you're doing right now and you take it online, when all this coronavirus is is over and done with and we're we're allowed back outside and back to reality, you've got a bricks and mortar business and an online business that's generating income and then all of a sudden you have two income streams and it just becomes this huge machine that you've built because you didn't let the negative mindset and the fear of the media literally consume you during this time period. And that they're the successful people, the ones that just keep going. Yeah, I think with what Naomi said there, one of the key things that I've seen is what a lot of humans do when panic sets in is they hit the self-destruct button. Mm. And I think it's that need, that inner need that we have for, for certainty. And maybe it's a subconscious thing because it is very self-destructive, but People think, ah, we might not have as much money coming in, so let's stop advertising so that we can guarantee that there's not as not not as much money coming in. Now I know not as much money is going to come in. I'm okay with this. This is okay. <laughs> Whereas it should, the reality is, it should be a case of we might not have as much money coming in. Let's make sure that doesn't happen mm. and let's go for it in this direction. But it's just one of those things that we see, isn't it? We we like certainty, even I like certainty. But yeah. as a marketer, I realised that stopping advertising because there's a, a tough situation is one of the worst things you could do because mm-hmm. not, not only is it hard times but now you're at the bottom of the pile during this hard time yeah and there's no worse place to be that just um that just reminded me about um Cadbury's and Bourneville during the great depression mm-hmm. um so obviously they were competing um the great depression Bourneville started to shut down because of the economy and stuff um and Cadbury pushed on you're like nope we're going to be everywhere uh, yeah. they came out of it and who's the winner Cadbury's and I think actually Cadbury's own board bill now um so yeah I just want to I wanted to share that because that, that was an important point you raised so what's what's been what's been some of the worst advice that you've ever been given listen to the gurus listen to the gurus listen to the gurus and there is the reason I say this it's just a point that Jay made earlier that what the information that they give you I'm not saying is wrong but what I'm saying is you need to find somebody that you can model that is at your level because what a lot of we get it so often we get people coming to us going oh but I've done Tyler Lopez's course or oh, I've done Gary Vee's lessons and I watch them on YouTube and I know everything to do with Gary Vee that's great but do you have millions of followers no is it what he says going to work for you? No. So stop listening to the gurus that have got millions of followers, are currently successful, and can literally sell just by waving a sock in the air and going, "Come and buy, come and buy my, my stuff." And you know, a lot of we get so many people, like I said, come into us with this problem. I've tried this, I've tried that, I've tried this, it doesn't work, and it's like, well, well, yeah, it doesn't work because you're not there. So. We found that out as well, very quickly, very, very, very quickly, thankfully. And um, we, we, we just, it just sort of like hit us on the head, like, is it Newton with the apple? 
Yeah. You know, it was like that moment. And we were just like, why are we listening to this person who has millions of followers? We don't have, we don't have, we have like four, <laughs> you know, it's not going to work the same way. You have to start from scratch. You have to build yourself up from the bottom, you know, and trying to get there too quickly. And we've seen a lot of businesses grow too quick and they've just crumbled because they can't, you know, the elastic band is stretched so far it snaps. You've got to stretch it. You've got to warm it up. You've got to warm up that elastic band so that you can stretch further. Um, so, yeah, that was kind of the worst advice given to me, really, is listen to the gurus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you do. yeah, I think, I, I can't remember who said it to me, but it was, it was years ago. There's, there's that, you know, the saying version one is better than version none. I'm a, I'm a big believer in that saying. I think, I think it works. It stops procrastination. Yeah. But it's got to have been from the corporate world but they said to me it'll do just get it out there jen i was like yeah but it's it's, it's not good enough yet they was like yeah but you, even you say version one is better than version non j and in my head at the time i was like yeah actually you're right i do say that but what they'd actually done is twisted mm. my own my own vision of what that meant so that i was just chucking stuff out there and the problem with that it version one is better than version none it's not about saying it will do just get it out it's about saying this is done to the best that i can do it as who i am right now today mm. so now it's at that best stage that i'm physically capable of doing right now i'm going to put it out there and yeah i know it's not perfect and i know it's not the best in the industry because that's not where i'm at right now mm. however i'm going to get it out there because then there's a line in the sand and now that's something something for me, for me to improve on like kids don't care about how much they grow until the mum marks it on the door frame. Then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm growing. But if, if you know, if your mum just says, yeah, are you growing? You are. Well, you know, every time you see a, a, when you're younger, every time you see a relative you've not seen for ages, oh, you're getting so big, you just brush it off. But when your mum draws it on the door, you're back at school the next day, like, yeah, <laughs> are you growing? I'm growing an inch. And it's, like, <laughs> it's, and it's that, it's, it's that you've got something to measure against, you know, that which you measure can improve. Mm -hmm. So it's about getting that measuring mark down again. Okay, that was me then, but that was the best I could do at that point. Now I'm here. Let's make a version two of that. And let's do it better. Yeah. And it might be that a week later or even a month later, you can do something better. But it's, it's not about getting, getting it out quickly and roughly just so that there's something going out there because there's enough noise online without your noise being added mm -hmm. that's badly written, badly designed. You know, illegible, whatever it is, some rushed piece of work that doesn't add value. It has to be good, and it has to be as good as you can do it as who you are right now. So I think that was the worst bit of advice I had. Um, yeah, it's it's got to be the best, done to the best that you're able to do physically right now. Okay, so you so you you've got something on the go. You're gonna you you're gonna put it out there with the with the best person as as you are and the, with the best knowledge you know. So you know, often sometimes that's gonna be you're not gonna get the desired result that you want. So what do you guys do for yourselves when you know you end up making a mistake or something or something doesn't go quite right? We, we just simply learn from it. That's all mm -hmm. you can do is just learn from the mistakes that you've made um and literally grow from it and make sure you, you don't make the same mistake again and like jay said you know you've got to measure the stuff that you've been putting out there i can guarantee you now that if you it's embarrassing as hell if you look back at our youtube <laughs> don't look back at our youtube <laughs> don't look back at it but yeah um the first videos we did were horrendous this is only three months ago man, so. <laughs> No, they weren't. <laughs> but the, you know, the very first <laughs> no, <laughs> the the very first video we did was was horrendous. You know, we're on we're on YouTube here. This you know, this is a, a serious platform, and we were putting videos out that were portrait. I mean, I was anyway. Jay told me off for it, but I, I hadn't used YouTube before, and you know, our descriptions were terrible. We weren't doing any of the tagging. Like none of it was optimized whatsoever. The thumbnails were absolutely awful they were terrible. and you know it, but at the time we were like this is amazing this is so good but we'd done everything to the best of our ability in that moment and then all we did every time we did another video was look back at what we've just uploaded and gone cringe okay, yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know okay we need to make this change or it would be a good idea if we did this in our next video mm. or how about we do this in our next video I've created a new thumbnail design for our next video. Let's try this and see if it gets more attention. And we've just kept going and kept going and kept going like that. Um, 
think the worst thing you can do is not with, tell your partner that you're changing the thumbnail design. <laughs> <laughs> with, with, um, you learn the hard way. Yeah, you do learn the hard way. Big <laughs> lesson. <laughs> I think the worst thing that you, you can do is put something out there that is the version version one is, you know, as the best it can possibly be. And then a couple of days later, replace that. There's, I don't think that should be done. I think it should still be there unless it's a huge mistake in it. It's a spelling mistake. Then fine, yeah. rectify it. But, um, you know, there's, there's certain things that you kind of have to do like overwrite, like websites, for example. You, you have to overwrite a website. But, I mean, if you're putting content out there, it's, it's, it's really good, for me anyway, from my personal opinion, to keep it there so that you can look back at that in a year's time and just go, wow, mm -hmm. look how far I've come, you know, in, in another year's time, we'll probably look back at the stuff we're doing now and be like, really? Is that really what we were doing? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, it, you know, I, I wholeheartedly agree that you shouldn't sort of replace the stuff you've done, like, as if it wasn't, as if you didn't do it. There you you've, go. got to, you've got to show your growth. And I was, uh, I was listening to uh, Bob Proctor this morning, and he, always, he, he says everything, everything in life can constantly be improved. There's, mm. no, um, there's no ceiling, there's no limit to anything, but you can constantly work on it. You can constantly make it better. Um, yeah. Do you, you guys feel the same way? 100%. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely about, definitely about improving things. But if we're sticking on the YouTube side of things as an example there, like Naomi said, it's overwriting something and just doing like getting rid of the old just because you can do it a bit better now mm. i don't think it's necessary that's great that's a great opportunity to produce a new video covering the same yeah. the same topic but if, if you have progressed and have improved then really your title will probably be different because it'll be better optimized more keywords more targeted towards your ideal client there's a good hook in it your thumbnail will naturally just be better anyway. Presentation should be better. Editing will be better. The points should be more succinct, uh, more powerful, uh, and your video should be more engaging. So effectively, if you change all of those things, that's a different video. Mm -hmm. So why remove what was already there? Yes, improve, but don't delete. It's yeah. about, and like I say, unless, like Naomi said, unless there's a massive error and it's damaging to your brand, then keep it there as like a, you know, stay humble. Yeah, we were crap before. We thought it was good, but that was the best at the time. That was that was as good as we were back then. Look how much we've improved now. Yeah. And that's 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 more. I'd rather have that than just cover over everything and look like we've always just been this. Because where's the progress? I think a good point with that as well is that there is a this is a grey area, and you know, people that are watching don't don't take what we're saying literally, and then you know, never change something because we've said don't change it. But there's a gray area around your version one products and services versus versus your 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 version one brand. Mm. And you know, your products and services 100 percent always update those particular products and services. Don't just leave them lying around and then show a new one. Don't do that. Whatever you do, we're, we're more talking about your physical presence online and your brand and everything around you as a person like you know have something to look back on you don't you don't get the chance to um go on stage and present your bookstore with none of these stories where you learned from in the past like people have to have something to learn from and it always helps when you're telling a story to have that to look back on and a great example of this and the person that does it is extremely well is russell brunson he has pictures, you know, of himself sitting in his garage when he first started. And Amazon, Apple, all these people have their garage pictures when they very first started versus these giant glass multi-million pound headquarters they have now. You know, and, and having that physical, visual pro progress that you can see is an amazing feeling to have. But when it comes to your products make sure that they are updated and you're not just leaving them <laughs> for everyone to see. <laughs> is one, th one tip I'd give there. Yeah, I'm going to add a tiny bit to that. Is one thing I have seen done is if you've created a program, for example, or a course, and then things are changing and there's quite a significant amount that you need to update and improve, then it's fine to keep that program or course available. Create a new program or course and make it like a, 
a V2, this is V1, and then you can give that program or that course away for free for those that haven't got it when they buy this one. So it's like an added benefit of you get the original, like Billy Jean is a great person at doing that, that does that. He will create a new program or course. And then when you buy that, he will give you the old course as well, because there's always value in there. A lot of things have changed, but there's still some great things that you can take from it that he may not re replicate in the new program. So having both, it's no cost to him. So why not, why not include it, that extra perceived value? It's yeah. A great way to do it. Have it as like an advanced course, which is another option you could do to go forward, but yeah. And you, you, you guys, because um, you, you spoke about your, your journey through YouTube and you guys have just hit a massive milestone, which is absolutely incredible. So tell, briefly, tell us about that experience and what you've both learned out of that. Stressful. <laughs> <laughs> I think a, a, a good point, um, and I don't know, you, you may disagree with me on this, but when we started uh, the 1st of January, I think we had the discussion before Christmas, and um, you know, we come across a couple of YouTubers that had done 100,000 subscribers in one year, and we were like, that's going to be us. We are aiming for that goal, that is what we're going to do. We were just like, how are we going to do this? And you know, there were times where we almost slipped on our recording mm, days. Yeah. And um, I was there like, we need to do this, we need to do this, we need to do this. And there was a couple of times where we did learn from it, it didn't get done. And then we were having to massively backpedal. Yeah. Um, and it, it almost cost us everything. But I think if, and I'm just saying this from my personal experience, how, how, how it's gone, I think if, if I hadn't have been the way I was, it might not have happened. But equally, if Jay hadn't been the way he was with the content, because you know a lot of the content that he creates is is the reason why our YouTube channel exists. And you know, I'm 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 the I'm here for the nagging, right? I'm here to nag. I'm here to a <laughs> hey, class nagger. <laughs> I'm here to <laughs> nag. I'm here to push. I'm here to make sure stuff gets done. Um, and Jay's, Jay's here to sort of produce the amazing quality of, of content that we're producing. And um, he's been a huge help when it comes to video editing. And this one. We've, we've had so many arguments about, you know, you, you've got to, you've got to, this is what Jay's like. You've like, you've got to move that in a little bit, a little bit more. Little, little bit. Stop, 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 going too far. Go back a little bit. I'm just like, oh my God, pulling my hair out when it comes to video editing. But I think, if we both hadn't have been the way that we were in the past three months, I don't think we would actually be here. It was very rocky for a bit, wasn't it? Yeah, you're definitely right. Because like we said a moment ago, or I don't know how long we've been on the interview for now, but when we talked about doing those small steps each day mm. towards your goal, you know, growing a YouTube channel, one thing that we do do is we set Monday aside and we do our recordings on a Monday and then our editing on a Monday. So we don't do anything with clients or anything on a Monday. That's that's like our Sunday for most businesses. And that's when we get all that done. So that it leaves the rest of the week for client work, lead generation, stuff like that. But that's not how you grow a YouTube channel. Just doing your videos and scheduling them on a Monday is not going to work. You've got to engage with other channels. You've got to share your videos out. You've got to look for people commenting or asking for help around a certain topic that you've covered. There's the research. There's looking at what trends are available. There's thinking about how you can put your spin and your brand and your value onto a certain topic. And you've got to be aware of that all the time. And it's difficult to be aware, especially during something like the coronavirus where, you know, our clients could all stop paying. And then, then what do we do? I mean, you know, we have a backup plan, but it, it, there's the potential that that could happen. And it, right now it still could happen. So we had to set little time schedules within a day where we would do something on YouTube. We yeah. would share something out. And we've used automation tools and things like that to, to help with that. But there's still that manual aspect because an automation tool is not going to find us the relevant content that we think, yes, we can put a great angle on that. That's going to resonate with our audience and that's going to add this, this and this amount of value. So it's really important that we do do that, that we have that time. And that's that's been key to our success that we have continued to set that a bit of time apart every day and then like Naomi said with her a keen eye for a, a good nagging session on a Monday to make sure that we do it because I, I, I'm 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 I am very consistent with what I do but <laughs> you know we do it on a Monday 
what time on Monday? It was not stated. So <laughs> as long as I know it's done on a Monday, I'll work till whatever time in the morning on Tuesday to get it done. Whereas Naomi doesn't want that to happen. It happens on Monday and it's done by a reasonable time so we can get to bed and have a good night's sleep. So, so you know, Naomi's more pinpoint consistency, whereas I'm just like, I'll do whatever it takes consistency. It'll be done on Monday. And Tuesday morning, it'll be good to go. Don't you worry. <laughs> and I, that's good. And I see you guys, you're, you're active on, very active on social media. And one thing that I see from you both, um, and I know you've drilled this into me as well, is, is about you, you're always celebrating. So for the people, that are, the people that are watching this video and watching this interview, why is it so important to celebrate? Well, there's, um, we had a bit of a revelation around this celebration um, principle a couple, about a month ago. And um, the, there was, we went through a bit of a lull and it was, it's hard, it's hard work. You know, at the moment, I'm not going to lie, because we've got this rebrand going on, by the way. <laughs> FYI, we've got a rebrand going on with our company. You didn't know. <laughs> um, and we're hoping to launch that in the next couple of weeks. And we're fast-tracking this as quickly as possible because we want to get ahead whilst everyone's in this weird mo in this weird phase of time with the coronavirus. So, mm. you know, we're trying to push this ahead as much as possible. Um, and we went through this this lull because we you know we're staying up late to the point that we weren't going to bed till like 1 a.m sometimes but we weren't tired we were just sat there like oh my god i want to work so much <laughs> um and we had to physically stop ourselves and go to bed and then we were lying in bed like wide-eyed thinking about talk, we we're having conversations in bed like oh we could do this tomorrow we do that little you know and we were, we, it was like we were on ca like caffeine in our veins 24 seven. And um, we were just so focused and we ended up speaking to one of our coaches and he said, the importance of celebrating, you've got to celebrate. And we hated the idea to start with, mm. well I did anyway. And uh, Jay wasn't a big fan, like we weren't doing it. Um, and then, you know, we had a bit of a telling off from our coach and said, you've just got to do it. You know, I'm not going to have another call with you until you do it, you know, you've really, gave us what for and um we we started to do it and it was it was amazing it was incredible the the uh, the transformation we went through was just unreal um, and we were we were celebrating everything and it was so hard everything <laughs> i was like <laughs> i made a cup of tea yeah and um <laughs> you know it, it does get to that point and now Everything we do now is like, it's a celebration. It's, it's great. It's like, you know, something like what we're doing right now is a huge celebration. We're being interviewed. This is, this is awesome. Mm -hmm. A thousand subscribers we hit last night. I could not stop smiling. I was like, ah, and, um, you know, it's incredible. And just the smaller things, when you celebrate the smaller things, it, it just makes everything feel complete in a, mm. in a strange way and it helps you when you're in the lull moments because it always will happen you peaks and troughs all the time and when you're on when you're in your peak that's where the celebration is going to come in and help you because you are in this low state but if you continue to celebrate you'll come out of that yeah. very very quickly and you'll be like what was I worried about why, why am I so bothered because you're being positive and when you're being positive the entire world is brighter it looks different you know you can achieve anything yeah. if you stay in that negative peak then all of a sudden the world honestly you can physically like visually see it the world's darker is gray and you're like why is everything and you feel gross and slumpy and like an ogre like blah. um so you know it that's why it's so important it is mindset 101 i think when it comes to celebrating yeah. i mean i think it's just a second that that it's in, it's massively important and that feeling that you get when you do celebrate something even something so small i mean for me i i, I do it now it's one of the things i struggle with you know i like to celebrate a big win and then a big win comes and all of a sudden like ah yeah but it's, you know we're not there yet over the line and then it's, it's like well, when, when do we celebrate so getting to the habit of just celebrating everything 
it, it gets you into that mindset of, well, you know, that's a step forward. Let's celebrate that and get that great feeling. Let's change my state so that I'm in a more productive well, state. And yeah. we started to do the celebrations before, like before this interview, we do celebrate. So raise that, raise the emotion, raise the energy and, you know, improve our state. We do it before other like coaching calls. We do it before sales calls. We do it before meetings. We do it before decorating, like when we decorated this place. You just set and then celebrate after. And it's just, you, you start to pinpoint that feeling that you've gotten to be able to control your state, how you feel. You know, when there is a time where you feel negative and down, to be able to just go, yes, and to celebrate, it's all of a sudden, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, cool. Let's, let's, let's do this. Yeah. And it, it helps because you're practiced, you know, everything you practice becomes permanent. Mm -hmm. So if you can practice celebrating smaller things, then even the times that you do forget to celebrate, you're still inside kind of like, yeah, done something. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're on a constant high almost. Mm. So, yeah, celebrate is key. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Um, so just, you know, just before we start finishing this up, what what is a question that I could have asked that perhaps you haven't been asked before or you've always wanted to answer? Oh, these are some good questions, Tom. Do you know what? I have? I do have an answer for this, and this came up for me quite recently in the past couple of days. Um, you know, it's it's around credibility and what sort of gives you the right to tell or teach people to do something if you've not had years of experience. Um, and this came up for me recently. Uh, I'll be open and honest. I had a comment on one of my Facebook videos mm -hmm. and um, they completely slated me. Um, and it was on a, it was on, it was a controversial topic. Um, and uh, what I said in my video was, was there's was nothing wrong with what I said, but some people just didn't like it and they have their own opinions, which is fine. But I got another comment from the same person that just slated everything I was doing. And I don't have the credibility to talk about what I'm doing. And it made me think, I was thinking, the way that's come across, just, just is, do more than one people think that? Is it, you know, is it, is it quite a well-known thing? If, well, if you've, you've not had this experience, how can you talk about it? And this stops so many people from starting a business. It's, it's incredible. And I think if I'd have had that comment a year ago, I probably wouldn't have carried on. 100%, I probably would have let it fester. And I would have been like, oh my God, I can't do this. Like even now I say to you, don't I? Like I sometimes sit there and I get, you get so caught up in stuff. You think, hang on a second. Do I even know what I'm talking about? <laughs> If you watch the bloopers on the YouTube videos, you'll, you'll probably hear us say that. Like, what, are we, what am I even talking about? It's just like, just like what, what am I even talking about? No one's going to listen to us. And this little voice comes up all the time. It's really funny because we're sit, sitting opposite Blair Singer's voice, a little voice mastery book right now out of the corner of my eye. I just spied it. And um, it, oh, yeah. it's, it's quite ironic, really. And that is one thing I would like to answer is that, no, you don't need to have loads of experience to go ahead and start a new career in something that you've never done before because everything can be learnt, everything. But experience is the best and the only teacher possible. So you've just got to go for it and you've got to continue to do it. I can sit and read thousands of books. doesn't mean I can go ahead and do it, you know? So when you're not never going to get there if you don't do the experience to teach you does that make sense so you've just got to go for it and figure it out on the way but just because you know my background's recruitment I actually had seven years in recruitment I didn't know anything about recruitment when I first started and I'm not gonna lie I didn't by the end of it <laughs> you know I knew that I had to go into work ring people to get them into a job that's it recruitment isn't hard it's not it's not hard to understand the grasp of it it takes education to and personality to get those people in and that's pretty much it but does that mean that I can't then go on and learn something else you know my my degree was in journalism so you know how how does that not make sense that I'm in marketing and it's just little things like that it's whatever skill set you've had um that you want to turn into something you know and we've had a lot of people come to us going well I don't know anything about this and it's like yeah but 
you know this which links to this so why can't you do that and they're like oh yeah so then they go off and do it and it happens all the time so I guess for me just like I said because it came up recently is something that I kind of wanted to voice and again for anyone listening right now they've had this moment where someone said to you you can't go ahead and do that you know nothing about this industry who's to say you can't learn it you know go ahead and find people surround yourself with people that do know and that can help you to learn and then the only way you're going to get better and learn it even more is by doing it you know it's you're not going to do it by sitting in your home reading those books thank you thank you no, that's an awesome answer awesome thank you so who is who is somebody that you guys know um that the people listening need to know that they might not in terms of people that we take influence from. Yeah, it could be it could be somebody, anybody, anybody, anybody that you know and you feel like the rest of the world needs to know them. Well, do you know what? One of the first people, Tom, I'd say is you. Yeah. 100%. One, one of the first people I would say, and I'm not saying, you know, you're the top person I think people need to know, but you're definitely one of the first people that comes to mind. Mm. I speak to so many people in, in groups online and even my own personal clients. And a lot of the issues that they face around not doing what they they want to do right now is, is a mindset issue. And like like Nate, the question that Emma just answered, yeah. the thing that I would have said is something similar. So people ask me, do I need loads of experience in order to to do this? Because we work with leadership experts, so like coaches, trainers, um, authors, speakers, people like that, and we help them to build a brand so that they can then position themselves as an authority in their niche and go and help the people they want to help. And one of the biggest things that stop them is not ability because you do only need to be a step ahead of someone in order to be able to charge a fair fee to help them get to that next step. Mm -hmm. And maybe they outgrow you quickly. That's fine. You've, you've done your part. You've taken them from not doing something they love to at least considering doing something that they love. And that is the hardest step. So for someone like you, I think people need to know people like you. And I'm sure there are other people like you that, that do similar things in different countries and things like that. But they, they need to know you because you are in that position where you're not so far ahead that it's like, yeah, Tom's packages are £100,000 a year. You're never going to be able to afford it. But if you can get some crazy loans to do it, he's going to help you to get there. That, that's not what you're about. You, you're affordable. You're fair. Yes, you offer a premium service at a premium price, but you offer you know the, the service that they get is premium. The results that they get is premium. So for people that are at that stage where they want to take the jump, I think that sort of person needs needs to know you. I've certainly learned a lot around mindset from, from you. And sometimes when I've doubted myself, it's almost like, what would Tom do? So a situation that comes in. So I think for me, one of the first people they need to know is you. And then the second would be um I, I would say I would say Russell Brunson, because he's done such a great thing, but I think he's so far ahead now that I would bring it back to something that's important for everyone, which is copywriting. So if you can sell, if you can write, you can sell. And selling is everything in life. And there's a guy called Jim Edwards who is partnered with Russell Brunson and he basically teaches the Copyright and Secrets book. Yeah. And Jim Edwards just knows his stuff. He makes, I don't think it's Albert Einstein said, if you can't say something simple enough and you don't know it well enough, or he probably said it more succinctly than that, but you get the idea. And he simplifies copywriting so well that it's almost like a fill in the gaps exercise. It's impossible to go wrong with him. And, and yet, like if you just follow that, you know, you, you'll be a great copywriter. Mm -hmm. You need to you need to understand it and break away from that mold afterwards to be an amazing copywriter. But you'll go from terrible to good, you know, at least good, but probably great if you listen to what he does and follow his steps. So yeah, for, for mindset and getting started, certainly you, and for actually being able to sell because you obviously need to sell in a business. And when you start out, you're probably the salesman, the cleaner, the accountant, you're everything. So I would then say someone like Jim Edwards is someone you need to read upon. Yeah. And I I, I second what Jay's just said about you, Tom. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of people that we've been trained by um, and only one of them has ever stood out to me before when I've been to seminars because most of them are very aggressive in the way that they they speak and they in in a way that obviously it's a good thing because they command the room and they grab attention but 
a lot of seminars that I've been to, they're very, they come across arrogant and you don't want that when you're trying to learn something. And, um, you know, from seeing from seeing the way that you are and you present yourself on, on your webinars and your lives and the way that you physically speak, you know, everything about you is relatable and you're easy to listen to. And I think that is so, so, so key when it comes to mindset. Um, you know, mindset and business coaching is it's something that you need. You don't want to be in, in a, you don't want to be in a coaching session with someone who is literally telling you off because you're you're gonna just switch off and you know you don't want that. You want a little bit of tough love, but you don't want someone telling you when you come on a coaching call, well, if you ain't done that, I don't want to talk to you. It's like, I'm not at school, I'm an adult. You know, you don't want that kind of approach. Some people might love it, but for me personally, I don't. And I think when it comes to the, the, definitely the mindset thing, like you have so many, like, so many good ways of saying things. And you say it, this is like just me, my, my opinion, but I think you say it in such a calming way, you instantly feel better anyway. So you're just like, oh, okay, let's listen to what Tom's going to say. <laughs> and um, I know from people that we know that you've helped and they've all said amazing things about you. Um, so yeah, guys, if anyone's watching, make sure you go ahead and check out Tom Cook. <laughs> thank, thank you, guys. And, you know, I, I appreciate that so much because... Um, I certainly remember, so back at the start of last year when we started working together, um, and I remember myself then, and it was very, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't fully there in my own belief. I wasn't fully there in my own confidence. Um, so the, the journey that we went on together, and, you know, for, the, for you guys watching, you know, there were times where I needed a bit of tough love and, and Jay and Naomi gave that to me and it was good. And there were times that I, I didn't believe, it's particularly around getting my first event up and running. But these guys got me over the line um, and they, they helped me fill the room as well. Um, so I, I mentioned at the, start of this, um, at the start of this interview, these guys were a massive reason for why I was able to leave my job. Um, so yeah, thank you so much guys for, for your kind words there. Welcome. Tell us, tell us more about where we can find you, what programs you've got, everything. Okay, so <laughs> here we go. No, um, nine ninety five. <laughs> three easy payments of nine ninety five. <laughs> um, YouTube is our biggest one right now, and um, the YouTube channel is currently called Build Your Expert Empire. Um, so you can go ahead and find us on there. We've got tons of information on there that we've done. Most, most of the stuff we do is branding. Um, we do little how-to videos as well on lots of different things. There's, lot, there's, there's lots of content for everyone on there. Um, the, so this is where it's gonna be a little bit of a, of a strange one because in two weeks time, people won't be able to find us on these channels anymore. <laughs> so um, what we'll do if it's okay with you, Tom, is we'll give you the updated versions of all of our links and stuff and maybe you could swap it out for us. Um, on the video that we're doing right now but for now our Facebook page is Empire Consulting um, we have we have our personal profiles as well so Naomi Hyatt and Jay Stanley Ford um, the website will change but it's empire-consulting.co.uk um, what else have we got Twitter LinkedIn we're, yeah, we're on everything Snapchat really. <laughs> TikTok follow us on TikTok <laughs> I know, I know people are going to be, I know people are going to be set at home. They've got a lot of time in their hands. Are there any books that they can read? Yeah, so there's, there's one that I've written uh, called The Anxious Entrepreneur. It's how to start the business that you're passionate about in spite of fear, funds or inexperience. Um, and we're currently, that's on Amazon. If you wanted to search for that, uh, I'm sure you put the link in, Tom. Um, and then we're currently writing another book, which has actually been inspired from well, by Russell Brunson and the things that we've learned through ClickFunnels. So we'll be writing that. We're hoping to launch that within the next four to six weeks. The website itself, we're going to be doing a pre-launch for it. The website yeah. itself will be up and running by the end of this week. So as of Monday, it will be live. Um, so again, I can let you know the link for that because we don't have that as it stands. Um, but yeah, we'll be doing a pre-launch for that so you can actually order the book get it and i'm so excited about that the book is super, called super branding secrets so yeah it's amazing it's gonna be big for anyone that anyone that wants to 
anyone that has expert knowledge or feels that they're in a position where they can teach and benefit other people, they're the type of people we want to help. Because like we said at the start of this, this interview, our mission is to positively influence the lives of 7 million people who want to go on to help and improve the lives of others. So in, in doing so, if we can help those people that want to be a speaker, they want to be a coach, they want to be a consultant or trainer, or they, they want to you know, write a book, they want to be some sort of online influence, then we want to help those people. And this book is that first step mm. to, to doing it. So it's, it's going to be super low cost to, to get the book. It'll be a physical book as well. So you can physically get it delivered to your door. Um, and then from that, it'll go through to all of the programs and trainings that, that we offer. So we offer coaching. Uh, we've got a P3 brand immersion, which we've now broken down into three sections so that you can jump in on, on phase one, which is three phases. You can jump in on phase one, which is the separate price. So phase two is a separate price. So you don't have to go all in in one go. It's more affordable. So yeah. we're really trying to help it and make it make it easy for people to make that decision to to go in and make a change in their lives because we don't want to pressure people with money because we get it. Not now is not the right time for everyone, but we want to make it easy for those that now is the right time. Something we do have available um, right now is something called the Empire Elite. And this is our membership that we have available. Um, it's currently ran through our Facebook group. Um, we are making steps to physically build a membership site on our website. Uh, but that's a you know a long process. So the, the Facebook group itself allows like-minded entrepreneurs to all come together and ask questions and get that support and accountability that they need whilst going through this process of building their business. Because we we realized that we were getting quite a lot of people asking us for help. And unfortunately, we're not able to give all of our free time to everyone asking for help and it was getting to the point where we were getting inundated and we were having to turn people away and you know they were getting upset with us and we were just like we've got to find a way to make it easy for people and affordable for people to come together if they just want that support and ask questions and uh, that's when we created the Empire Elite membership group so I can give you the link for that to Tom and then you can um, put that in the description for us that'd be awesome. Yeah, what we'll do is all all the links to um, you know every everything that you guys got. We, we'll put it in the show notes. Um, we'll have it with this video as well, so people can find you. Um, I don't know they'll be able to find you easily. That's awesome, guys. Thank you so much. You've been amazing today. Um, loved hearing from you, and it, it's great. You know, after working together, to to be able to sit down with you guys and ask the questions. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, guys. <laughs> Thank that? you so much. Um, we didn't get told off either. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Awesome, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. I wish you all the best. Thank, Thank you. you.